Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy and I own and operate Levison Productions. We are a production company for hire based out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but we are willing to travel. Today's shoot is just a quick little two location interview. We got three in one location and three in another. This is for a project with a local university promoting one of their organizations. Here we are just setting up the cart. I've got this little tabletop that I really love that I can put on top of the cart and screw it down and I can put some things on top plus all of the things on the bottom which just allows for a lot of storage and I can make sure to get all of the gear that I need going forward. Today's vlog is actually going to be about relighting spaces because recently I've had to relight a couple spaces so I wanted to use this as the premise of the video. Okay, today's vlog is going to be about how to relight a room. We're here in a kind of office room here and we need to relight this entire space because I don't like these overhead lights and I don't want them on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to turn these off. Oh, there we go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to frame up my composition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my tripod, which I have right here, and I'm gonna take my A camera. Today we're actually using the S52X because we've got a window right behind there. And what I wanted to do was expose for the window so that we could have, it's because it's, otherwise it's like some bland walls and I don't really like that. So we're exposing today for the windows and we're relighting the entire space because I just don't like the light that is in the space right now. So in the S52X setup right now, we're gonna run 6K non-open non gate in, in camera, and then we're gonna run 4K ProRes to the Atomos Ninja V. My editor is gonna want the ProRes file, just easier for them to work with. So yeah, the past couple of days actually, I've been on set or doing a lot of interview work, and I've been relighting sets and relighting rooms. And so I wanted to talk about how to do it, number one, but also number two, to be prepared for it. Um, I thought I was over packing, to be honest, for the past couple days because I had so many lights, I had so many things that I just was like, I am, I am definitely over packing. But I ended up using basically everything now I'm not realizing that I'm not overpacking. So I wanted to talk about this because I have been doing a lot of relighting of spaces and sometimes it can be easy like this room. Sometimes it can not be easy. So it really just depends on the type of room that you're in. This one's going to be a little bit easier. We're going to be in another location as well later. I don't know if we're gonna turn those lights off because it is the entrance and hallway and everything. So right now I've got my composition set. I've already been in here, so I already know the room and I knew kind of the way that I wanted to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up until I see zebras. So I am gonna try to do more of the light in the window in the frame so we've got our scene set up and i'm actually using the 24 to 105 and you may be thinking well why would you use an f4 lens mainly because i'm not super worried about the bokeh in the background and even still this is pretty great bokeh 24 to 105 we've got a one to five stop variable nd filter on there and yeah so now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start relighting the room and I'm gonna do it in a way where I can, I'm gonna basically just take a couple lights and bounce them off the ceiling to fill in the room. I don't wanna like brighten up the room so much. I just wanna brighten it up enough that we have more light to fill out the back. Well, either way I'm gonna use a 600D, but in this space, I'm honestly kind of thinking just a soft box with a grid and maybe some diffusion in front of that. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and get my lights set up. So I'm gonna kind of try to time lapse that. So here I am just quickly setting up the Godox light. I'm putting this on a C-stand and I am just blasting it into the ceiling to add some overall ambience. Yeah, you're gonna see what's gonna happen when I hit turn on. 
So you can see how much light comes back in from just that. And now I can reposition it so that it can actually be a little more like that. But I don't think I'm gonna need more light. I think I'm actually going to be okay with the light. I'm gonna just do that. And then I think that should be all that I need. Let me just turn this off. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's all that I need really, light-wise, I think. And so what I can do now is I can get my Aperture 600D in here, and I'm gonna set it up on here, like on camera left. And I'm gonna try, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try and get a second camera in here. I don't know if that's gonna work. So we're gonna go ahead. I kind of have time to do a, a book light. Okay, editor Jeremy here. I'm working on this vlog right now and I tried to do a book light setup. It was just not gonna fit in the space. And then I tried to do a Aperture 600D through diffusion and it also didn't work. So if you see any of that in the frame in any of this stuff going forward, just know that I tried all of this stuff because I had the time. And one of the reasons why I like getting places early is so that I have time to do things but I ended up not actually using it because it just wasn't going to work the way that I wanted to. So if you see any of that, that's why I decided instead to just do the Aperture 600D and Softbox. Here I am setting up a piece of diffusion that I am going to shoot the Aperture 600D through. Now I tried this, but I couldn't get the Aperture 600D far enough away. And with the window in the background, it was just too bright to use the 600D through a diffusion. So normally I would do this to soften the light even more, but given that we actually needed more raw power than we needed soft light, I decided to remove this diffusion material and just use the soft box. What I wish I had tried and I didn't try is removing the grid and then shooting through this piece of diffusion because that might've actually been what I needed, but we will never know. And you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. See how it's just like, it's at 60%, it's not soft enough. So what I think what I'm gonna do is just gonna go ahead and remove the diffusion and just bring the soft box as close as I can to me. So let's, let's try that right now. And then here's just a quick time lapse of me removing this diffusion sheet and moving the soft box in closer to my face. So that's what we're working with. I think I'm okay with removing the grid because I'm not trying to control anything. Okay. So this isn't actually that terrible of a look of a shot because I have some room over here. I may add some bounce. I was gonna add a hair light, but I think instead I'm gonna add a bounce to bounce some of that light back in because I don't really think I need a hair light too much. So let me just real quick. The hat is going to be what it's gonna add. So, so I can have the mic there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just add, add a fill light because it's still soft. And I can even go down on it to like 25%. I think that, yeah. And then add, I guess I can actually add a Godox tube light. Let me go get a tube light and see how that works. Okay, let's change this to like 5,600 to match that, turn it to 50%. And I think if we just do this, then I'll have to see how it looks when somebody's here, but we just like that versus, I think that'll do it. It's probably all I need. So I think that'll be a good setup. Now we can run B boom mic. So here we are just setting up the boom mic. We're running a Sennheiser MKE 600 with the Ore boom pole. I really love this boom pole because it has built-in XLR, which just means that I don't have to worry about finding a really long cable to plug into the back of the 
a Sennheiser, I can just run this into the back of the boom pole, which is usually close to my camera. I'm gonna see if I can run a secondary camera. So we're gonna go ahead and actually get that now and see if we can run the secondary camera off to the side a little bit. So I'm gonna move some things around. We'll just time lapse that. So one thing I have recently figured out is that I do not want to be a one-man band anymore. I think going forward, I'm going to make sure that I have an assistant that it's built into the price because trying to set up and tear down and try new things and try new lighting, it would be really helpful if I had somebody else there the entire time. And actually earlier this week for a full day shoot, I had two people. One was a B-roll shooter mostly, but one was a PA and things went so quick and smooth that it just kind of changed my mind and realized that I don't want to be a one-man band anymore so going forward i am going to always have an assistant we're getting audio i'll check the audio to this camera later so that's set up for this what we need to do is test over there i'm not going to show this on camera mainly because um i need to use this camera to test the lighting and things over there I'm not gonna get this next part on camera, but it's gonna be a similar thing where we're gonna probably have to relight the entire room. What I'll have to do is take 600D out, Godox out, and small rig, I have another light out. Just not gonna record this next part because I need to be able to use another camera. All right, now let's break down this final setup. So going forward, we've got the Godox VL150 bouncing straight off of the ceiling, which is adding a really nice fill to the room. We wanted that overall ambient room to be decently lit. And so this is adding that ambience that we wanted. So our key light setup is the Aperture 600D, which is running at about, I think 30%. And we have the Aperture Light Dome 2 on there with no grid on the front. I didn't really need to focus it on the talent. And that's running on a C stand with two sandbags. And then over on the side, we actually have this Godox TL60, which is adding some fill into the side of the talent just to brighten up that side not make it too shadowy and then for the boom we're running a sennheiser mke 600 on this ra boom pole still one of my favorite boom poles and we're running that out to the zoom f3 which is attached to the s52x rig and running a line out to the s52x so that way we can get audio f into the camera as well as the f3 and for our monitor we're using the ninja v which we are actually recording to the ssd because my editor wanted prores and on the lens of the s52x we have a two to five stop variable nd filter and we're running the 24 to 105 at 24 and f4 then on the rig powering the f three we have this small rig npf battery plate and we have a usb-c running from it to the zoom f3 to power that since it causes ground loop issues if you don't have the zoom powered separately then the way that the camera is powered and the monitor it's very weird but it is a quirk i still love it though because it's 32-bit float and we have the camera actually powered with this condor blue usb-c to dtap and uh, something new i picked up and i absolutely Absolutely love and this whole thing is sitting on a Manfrotto 504 HD head and leg spreader system and I love this tripod so for our B camera we have the GH6 which is running 5.7 K H265 420 just as a backup angle in case we need to cut and that's sitting on a Manfrotto 504 HD head with small rig leg system which I do want to replace soon for our lens on this one we are running the 18 to 35 with with a two to five stop variable ND filter. And that's on the Metabones 0.64 speed booster. And we are running that at a 35 mil. And I don't talk about the headphones a lot, but I love these. These are the Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones and they are awesome. They sound phenomenal. So now I'm just kind of walking backwards so you can kind of see the whole setup in action. It really did a lot of good work to get the overall ambience of the room up while also making sure our subject was exposed. And you can see here what the final shot looks like from the main camera. I think it did a really good job of exposing for the windows, not being too hot on the person's face, but just overall a really good quality looking image.
Okay, now we're gonna break down this second setup. Now I didn't actually show it being set up, but I just wanted to break it down real quick. We are running the same two cameras, but instead on the GH6, we're running a 24 to 70. For our key light, we've got the Aperture 600D with the Light Dome 2 that's giving our subject a nice light. And we're running again the RA Boom Pole and the Sennheiser MKE 600. This is honestly a killer combo. I love it. For our hair light, we have the Godox TL60 on a C stand with a, an impact boom arm, which I love. It's, I just recently picked it up. And this is with two sandbags. The TL60 has this TL60 grid, and it really helps focus the light on the subject. Really quick and easy setup, and it actually ended up looking really good. You can see here we've got great light on the person the backgrounds exposed because of the overhead light and we've got a good hair light on them so as i pack up from the shoot i just wanted to say that sometimes a simple setup can be just what you need you saw that we really only used about three lights in the more complicated setup it helped us give a good room ambience a good fill and a really good key that allowed us to expose for the window now the window wasn't too bright but it still was bright enough that i you know wanted to use the 600d for this these kinds of jobs are really easy they're really quick and i honestly love them because they don't take a lot of time to set up and tear down um, and they're just fun to do I really like to just have a more simple setup it allows me to take more time to really think about what I'm doing you know this one was not an easy setup in some ways because the room was really small and tight so in order to get the B camera in there I really had to do some fidgeting around um, in order to get the light I wasn't able to run the book light and so it just wasn't ideal for a setup but I you know worked with what I had and I think that you know a lot of us filmmakers a lot of us commercial people we really want to create the most gorgeous artistic shots and while there is definitely a time and a place a lot of the times just getting it to look good but not you know phenomenal can be all that is needed and that's what i think was here we we're going to try to put a lot of b-roll photos and some things over it so the person was only going to be on the screen for just a short amount of time so it really wasn't a big deal to make this look like art and one last thing having the right amount of gear having the right gear that you need for the shoot is really important what wasn't shown in this was actually uh two days before we had to relight an entire warehouse and i thought i had overpacked for that but uh i did not and so the last thing I want to say is just be prepared. If you feel like you're overpacking, you're probably packing enough or you might be not packing enough and you might actually want to overpack. I feel like you can see the amount of gear that I have here for just a two camera simple uh, interview setup, but really I used most of the gear here and I am thankful that I had it all. And I'm also very thankful for this cart. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. I'll leave a link up in the top or in the description below. And thank you. Have a great day.